cat interviews at uber confluent indeed and many many more companies i have seen it all after countless hours on the other side of the table i know exactly what top companies are looking for especially in nld in this course i'll share the insider blueprints what to focus on especially key design patterns how much multi threading very important counter question traps and how to tackle them confidently this course is structured practical and tailored on what companies are looking for right now let's get you into ready right now now continuing off with our LLD series, we will see bridge design pattern as the word itself says and also we saw in our introduction to structure design pattern video. Bridge pattern basically bridges the gap between different components for us. Now again, kind of you can say separating the unseparable that you have two things, you know, like you are just having let's say one thing you will still try to have it in two different things so that you can maintain and scale both of them independently. Now, before I proceed forward and at any point in time, if you get confused with adapter design pattern, then make sure that go back to the adapter design pattern video, which is you can find it here as well. Go back to that video and with that, you will figure out that, okay, what exactly is the difference between adapter and bridge? Now, let's continue further. Take an example in which you have different shapes, circle, rectangle, triangle, so on and so forth, and different rendering methods. For the folks who are not familiar with Adobe, um, you know, Adobe Illustrator or, you know, any of these photo editing websites, uh, you will not know about Vector, but just imagine that uh, you have different rendering methods of how any specific, you know, uh, diagram or thing can be rendered. Now, your task is to create a system which can render any specific shape with any rendering method. So, circle, it has its own attributes, you know, radius and you can draw. Rectangle, it has width, height and also you can draw. But, vector rendering, again, you will ref, you will see me referring about vector rendering and, you know, rest rendering. So, I'm just giving a quick explanation for the folks who don't know. It simply uses some mathematical equation to draw a shape while raster rendering it uses pixels to draw a shape so you see that just to draw a shape itself i have different rendering methods now your task is that you will simply try to draw the same thing which we saw as an example so what you will do you will simply take a shape and then you know that you have to do a raster drawing of circle and rectangle so you will do a raster draw you will have a specific method which you will implement so you have a circle which will implement a raster draw and thus you are doing a circle raster drawing. Same way you have rectangle, now you are doing a rectangle raster drawing. So obviously you are easily able to do a raster draw. But secondly, if I ask you that bro, rather than doing a raster draw, let's do one thing. Let's do a vector draw. So what will happen? If I just, I just simply asked you that another drawing facility came up, you know, vector draw. So you will firstly have to keep your specific method here. Every child class, circle, rectangle, everyone, every shape will have to have this specific method. So you must have seen so far that this very much tight coupling and uh, very less flexibility. So first, there's no flexibility for rendering method. I, if I add any, any rendering method, I have to modify every shape class, which is very bad, which means a lot of codes or code snippets or, you know, code blocks are being touched, which is bad. Along with it, you have a lot of duplication as well, because there's a possibility that a lot of classes would be implementing the same piece, which could have been there in the vector rendering itself. So that's one other issue, you know. Second thing is obviously scalability as a lot of shapes are there, then adding any new rendering method will end up, you know, you with a significant changes, which is again bad. So what, what, what you have to think of firstly and foremostly is as a word says that try to separate, try to separate things. I, you might feel they are not separable, but still separate them. So in that, I could simply see that I have shape and I have some render methods. So this renderer, it can be raster, it can be vector, so on and so forth. I will try to separate them. Now, 
this one quick catch which i'll come back to later on also you try to separate between shape and renderer but you will still be confused later on that what to do inside what i will come back to later on but the primary use case is that you will simply bridge them just to get your functionality done and again both can go individually coming on back to the actual question that imagine you have to add a new shape or a new rendering method then obviously you want to ensure minimal changes in your existing piece of code and again please ignore the background noise there are children playing in society and also we want to decouple the shape from its rendering methods and that is the reason these two components can independently grow so if i would have gone with the ugly piece of code then this is how it would look like again i will let you go and read it but you will see a lot of you know hard coding maybe i can remove it but still uh, all these logics is very tightly coupled which is uh, a very big issue and uh, yeah you kind of screwed up so maybe hard coding i can ignore by keeping things in separate classes but still tightly coupled it, it it was there because we saw that a shape was actually having a method of raster uh, draw and it can have method of vector draw so on and so forth and again it's a very 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 fragile design just one addition or one change in any drawing functionality for example let's say uh, you know some designer came up with that okay vector draw should also include one specific thing you know uh, for all the drawings there's there like there's a small change in logic in vector draw let's say it has to go through all of the classes every shape every concrete shape class it, it, it has to go through that's again a very bad thing so we realize we will we'll separate shape and the rendering method now make sure that you understand we are saying it separates ab abstraction from its implementation you will read at lot of places this line separates abstraction from its implementation but with the help of example now it is sure that shape i can have different shapes but implementing methods is rendering method that how that shape can be rendered again why this is important is entire thing will revolve around that what is being done shape how it is being done is this thing so what you will say that i will say that okay i will provide concrete implementation a specific implementation for all the rendering methods and again if any new rendering method comes in future i simply know that this rendering method should cater all of my shapes right again i am saying i'll show you one thing please don't get confused with it what you will see right now is you have a renderer and then you will say are it is coupled i have a render circle i have a render rectangle any new shape which comes in future i have to have that as well i'll say and then you will say are in with that change what will happen is that if let's say any new shape let's say triangle comes up then are in any new shape which is triangle i will have to add a method let's say void uh you know triangle and then giving its corresponding length and uh you know height uh, sorry breadth and height and then uh, every every rendering method would be implementing rectangle so that like that is a very genuine question and that's the reason i came up to that specific implementing implementation so if i go back implementation which is the rendering methods it needs to cater all the shapes or specific or specifically a shape which we want you know it to cater now if you still say are no i don't still you know i don't want it that uh, all the specific rendering methods should be incorporating a shape then okay you can keep it default as well but the entire catch here is that shapes will remain same you know they will not evolve as such even if they evolve okay but rendering methods can evolve very fast and that is the beauty if the shape will not evolve much so my these methods will remain as is it's just that if the rendering method evolves then i will have a separate renderer so you know a specific concrete class raster renderer which will just override these implementations and say okay these are my implementations for circle rectangle and so on and so forth same way for vector this will say these are my implementation of rectangle uh, and circle and so on and so forth now for shape i will simply say because shape is abstract class as, as i said abstraction of your main thing so if i go back we realize that 
abstraction shape implementation rendering method so coming on back going on to our shape itself we see okay the shape will say i will accept a renderer and then my draw will simply call this renderer again now the draw can have other logic as well because let's say for a circle shape before drawing you want to do some other operation and then you want to call it the renderer method and then other some operation so that's the reason it is put as an abstract implement by totally or means every shape can have its own drawing logic so what will happen now now the thing is that you will have a circle it will call super now why it is calling super with this renderer just so that to place or to assign this renderer variable as a value renderer so now renderer is assigned now i can simply call the render circle method with this radius and with that i will get the answer now in future let's say you know uh, obviously let's say the classes remain same or even the, if the classes are there or you know um, any new re rectangle came up okay just simply call your rectangle with the render method and the renderer method will say that okay bro um, i will call renderer and the render rectangle this within height and you will be good to go so this is how exactly you bridged between a renderer method or renderer functionality and your corresponding shape class right so just give me an example that we had this raster renderer which i will pass on to my constructor of my circle which is a shape and then i have a raster circle shape now in that specific shape i can call the draw function this draw will simply go on to my specific circle and it will call raster renderer dot render method of my raster renderer with this specific radius and with that i know that renderer this raster renderer with the specific radius will be called on our specific circle you know render circle so it will call on the specific radius and will give me a corresponding rendering that i wanted so that is ultimately how you decoupled your rendering logic along with your shape now again as i mentioned uh, you might can be like you might be confused on exactly what you know i should keep because again you might be confused okay here hey, renderer will have different corresponding you know rendering methods and then uh, everyone has to implement it and all that so on and so forth yes it is true but again it's kind of uh, that if you want your functionality such that a renderer should cater to all the shapes else you will end up being you know giving a runtime exception although if some rendering method is there it should cater all the shapes right logically also it makes sense so it's the reason the definition itself says that uh, you will separate abstraction from this implementation and implementation you can have its own implementation with the corresponding methods which will in which will incorporate the logic for all the ab abstraction cool uh, let's proceed and let's see the corresponding benefits which we saw just you know quick recap it, it helped us giving a decoupled logic uh, scalability obviously includes whenever things are decoupled reusability is insanely high because now i can reuse the same uh, you know piece of code multiple times inside the same thing and maintainability also increases when the things are more decoupled and scalable right some real life use cases as we already saw that uh, we have some graphic libraries ui famous again imagine anything whatsoever where you decouple things you are simply using your, your bridge pattern you know uh, it can be persistent mechanisms and so on and so forth so basically ultimately we are saying that we are decoupling abstraction from its implementation and this is achievable by using your bridge pattern giving us flexible scalable and maintainable piece of code cool i hope you guys liked it again if you have any doubts regarding difference between bridge and adapter please make sure that you watch this video of adapter again the link will be available here itself uh, and yeah if you liked it make sure that with the like tag it off 250 likes and see you next time goodbye take care bye bye